Good afternoon, average engineers. It's been a while since I had a video. I thought I'd throw one out on an interesting topic that may be new to you. It was kind of new to me, and this is about running DBT on Databricks. Now, I'm not much of a SQL guy. I do write some Spark SQL here and there. I just left that SQL world a long time ago. I can still write it when I need to. And of course, like anybody, as a data engineer, you end up using SQL a lot. I know there's a lot of data engineers who spend most of their time in SQL. And DBT, obviously, is one of those tools that has been gotten, that has gotten very popular. A lot of people that are on SQL teams use it constantly. And I was just curious about the integration between DBT and Databricks. Typically, you don't think about Databricks and DBT together, and that's what I did today. I just did a little test to see, hey, what's it like to use DBT on Databricks? What's the integration like? Now, this video isn't really about DBT itself. This is not a tutorial on DBT. I'm going to assume you know something about it. So if you've been living under a rock and you're not sure what DBT is, it's called the data build tool it's an open source analytics engineering tool that helps teams transform model and manage their data within their data warehouse or lake house using sql based workflows that's key there sql based workflows it's widely used in modern data stacks to ensure reproducibility version control and testable data transformations what that boils down to is that sql in the past has been very dirty people just write massive sql statements they usually don't end up in any sort of git version control there's no reusability it's just piles and piles of sql and it gets a nightmare and anybody who's been in data engineering around data knows that and that's basically what db3 tries to solve it saves us from unruly sql gives us a way to write reusable sql testable sql and just bring some order to the chaos so let's jump into DBT on Databricks. Actually, the integration is pretty streamlined, and what we're talking about is really going to be DBT plus Spark SQL, because that's what you would be using on Databricks. So the first thing to know is that when it comes to doing local development with DBT and Databricks, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need the DBT core enabled as an OAuth application inside your Databricks account, and this is enabled by default. And you will also need a personal access token to be able to connect your local development environment to that Databricks account when you're doing development. So you'll need that DBD core enabled as OAuth again, and you'll need a personal access token as well as a few URIs we'll talk about in a minute. If you're new to DBT, what we're going to do is just start a little project here. I'm going to use UV in my example. It's a nice little pip and a kind of poetry replacement for Python. So we're going to UV in it. DBT Databricks. It's going to make us a little project. We're going to make a VNV, so virtual environment, and then we're going to source it and start it. And then we're going to install two Python packages. One is DBT Core and the other one is DBT Databricks. Once that is done, we're going to do a dbt init command. So we're going to say dbt init and we're going to call it bricks. Basically what's going to happen is we're going to get a new dbt project called bricks and then it's going to ask us a couple questions when we're setting up the profile here. Of course it's going to ask us do you want to use databricks or spark? We're going to say databricks. Once we do that it's going to ask for our uri to our host, basically your databricks account uri. There's mine. You'll need that. Another thing you're going to need for the HTT T path is you're going to need the URL from either an existing running cluster or say like a SQL warehouse that's running. You could go to either one of those configs in the Databricks UI. You could grab the HTTP path. You'll need that because of course if you're developing locally and want to run code it needs somewhere to run. It needs some compute to run those DBT models so you need the URI for that. And of course it's going to ask you for your access token as well that you will need. And it also asks if you are using Unity Catalog or not, and we will use Unity Catalog. So pretty straightforward. Just wanted to make a note there that, you know, the integration is pretty nice between DBT and Databricks. I mean, that was really straightforward and pretty nice. So again, you need your host URI of your Databricks account. You'll need a personal access token. You'll need the HTTP URI of a cluster. You can get that under your advanced cluster settings for the OBDC or JBDC tab, or you can use the same thing. You can use a SQL warehouse. Also, you'll if you're using, you're going to need a catalog name if you're using Unity Catalog, which I am. So you'll need the name of the catalog that you're using. And of course, you can run DBT debug once you have done those things, and it'll go ahead and test your connection and tell you if it's working or not. Now again, like I said, we're going to be writing DBT models on Databricks, but this isn't really necessarily an introduction to DBT, but I do want to talk about how DBT models are materialized. There's a couple different options when we're talking about materializing models. And again, if we're talking about people are using DBT, they're probably writing large SQL-based data pipelines with many SQL statements chained together. 
and a lake house or data lake environment and of course how you materialize those views or those models is going to be important topic on your Databricks account. Why? Because if you decide to materialize your models as tables, for example, and you have a big pipeline full of SQL statements and you're materializing every single model as a table, that's going to get very expensive. Why? Because tables are expensive to store. If you have large tables working in a large lake house, you probably don't want to materialize every single model as a table because your storage cost is going to explode. So maybe doing something like an ephemeral materialization, which is kind of like a CTE, etc. So you just need to think about it. Um, learn about them. There's tables, views, incremental, ephemeral, and materialized. That's your options. Again, maybe your final model, your gold, which you would call your gold later, gold layer in the architecture. Maybe those are materialized as tables, whereas your intermediate steps are ephemeral, kind of like a CTE. So you just things you need to be aware about to control costs. Let's get to actually writing a simple model and just seeing how it works on Databricks. What we're going to do is we are going to use a pre-existing Delta Lake Unity catalog table I have here with the hard drive failure data set from Backblaze. It's an open source data set. You can Google it and find it. And it's basically failure data from server farms. It has a date. It has like a serial number of a hard drive, the model of the hard drive, and then a bunch of other information, including if that hard drive failed. You can see here, this is what it looks like. This is a pre-existing Unity Catalog Delta table. Basically what we want to do is we got pretend like we got a request from somebody, maybe some systems admin people want to know how many hard drive failures we're getting per day per model. So they want to say, hey, per day, which models of hard drives in our data center are failing most often? And we need to write a DBT model to get the answer for that. Again, this is what a simple dbt model would look like. We have a config up top and we're going to say our materialization is a table and the file format is delta, meaning when we run this model we want it materialized as the result as a delta table. And basically you can see, you know, this is some SQL here, simple SQL. Obviously in production you would have many complex SQL statements, maybe even multiple models kind of chained together. But what you can see us doing here is we're saying, hey, from that hard drive failures table, we're going to group by the date and the model, right? Because we want to know. And then we're going to count the number of failures per date per hard drive model. And we just select that. And that is going to be our DBT model. Easy enough, right? Remember, we're going to materialize it as a delta table. So, of course, we can do locally, we could just say DBT run model. And of course, there's different ways to do this in production. We'll talk about that later. And it go ahead and it will actually run that model on Databricks using the compute that we kind of put in connected to in the beginning when we were configuring stuff. And now, since we materialized at a table, we should see be able to see a new Unity Catalog Delta table that has been created. And if we go look, there it is. There's our new hardware table in our Unity Catalog. And it's by date, by model, and it's got the failure count of the hard drives per day. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward, nothing fancy there, which is kind of nice. That means the integration between DBT and Databricks is fairly simple and straightforward. And if you're running large Spark SQL based, mostly workloads, not data frame again, if you're running a lot of SQL, you know, DBT is obviously an option here. But what if you're like me and say, hey, what about production? What about production workloads? Hey, don't worry about it. It is easy with Databricks and DBT to run your models and store them in a Git repo, which is cloned and synced to Databricks. Databricks has that option where you can sync repos out there. So you could, of course, keep all these DBT models in a repository in Git and keep it synced out to your Databricks account. And then, of course, you can run Databricks jobs any way you want, just like anything else. There's no different running DBT jobs on Databricks. You can use notebook jobs. You can just use regular Databricks jobs with code that you've got packaged up elsewhere. It's pretty easy. There's nothing special about this. Most people who are using Databricks at scale and production already have these systems in place, so this is really no different. Thinking about DBT at a high level on Databricks, this is interesting. Firstly, I think from everything I've seen, the DBT and Databricks have a first class support integration for each other. So if you want to, so if you want to have that tooling, it's going to be super straightforward. You're going to have zero problems setting it up, zero problems running DBT jobs on Databricks. It's super simple, obviously. But why would you do that? Mostly because if you have large SQL based, Spark SQL based, you know, queries and data pipelines, 
it probably does make sense to use dbt because what do you get you get modular sql you get easy testing etc but again this is not a requirement i personally use a ton of databricks we use you know probably 80 percent data frame api and maybe 20 percent sql base but we unit test and modularize our sql anyways and unit test them etc they're reusable so i personally think you can get the same thing you get out of dbt using just good software engineering best practices you don't surely need to use dbt basically what i'm trying to say is you can achieve these same things that dbt gives you without dbt in fact i would say the majority of serious databricks users do indeed get all these advantages with that you might want out of dbt you get it while not using dbt it's just called writing your code correctly, writing module or reusable testable code. You don't need dbt to do that, although you can use it. I'm not necessarily bashing dbt, I'm just making a point. Why would a data team choose to use dbt and databricks as their primary data transformation tool? Well, it basically comes down to SQL. If you are a SQL only based team and that's your skill set is basically writing SQL and you're not good at programming, etc not good at PySpark it's just not you're comfortable you have to write everything in SQL then yeah it probably does make sense to use dbt it just does because it'll it'll make the code more reusable it'll make it more testable etc and most likely if you're a SQL only based team you're probably not that good at software engineering best practices so your SQL will probably get out of control if you don't use something like dbt Again, this is just a short video on DBT and Databricks. I hope you learned a little something about both. They integrate really well. It's pretty nice, although I think you should stop writing so much SQL probably.